March 1947, and a reminder, this is not the first time this has happened. Thousands lost their homes in the Great Thames Flood. There were calls back then for the government to stop this ever happening again. 65 years on, and hundreds have again been moved out of houses in the Thames Valley. Troops are now on the ground in significant numbers. Thoughts are now turning to the future, and once again, questions are being asked about building on floodplains like this. Friary Road to the west of Raysbury has seen some of the worst flooding. Sue Milburn and her husband live at the end of the street. Here, 4x4s and even fire engines are still being turned back. like that, that vehicle there is absolutely no good to people where we are further down on the island. So the people living here are having to make do to get around. Boats and canoes are now the main form of transport in some parts of Raysbury. The flood water here is at least three or four feet deep, in some places even deeper than that. And what you really notice here when you travel past is how some houses have escaped almost unscathed, others that are perhaps less well designed have seen the flood waters pour in. The head of the organisation which monitors flood levels called today for more homes to be built like this one, on stilts with the ground floor used as a garage. Often though, even in areas like this, that hasn't happened. That's flooded. There looks like steps there, but at the back, they haven't, they're not as high. You'll be able to see how a river house is and how dry we are inside. You wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Sue Milburn's home was lifted from the water on stilts with specialised concrete foundations to prevent subsidence. You can't complain about that, can you? So no water here at all? This whole house itself is, is completely no, this, dry? this house would never be flooded. I can't ever see as a time when we'd have water actually into the house because it's built so high, it's built about a metre and a half higher than the 47 floods. So if this house flooded, it would mean all of Windsor Town would be flooded. She yeah, walked us outside to see how her neighbours were getting on. That's, uh, the lady's had to move out, she's a lady who lives on her own. And although the water's not in the house, the electric um, meter is very low down. It's just switched her off basically, so there's no heating, no lighting. We have to build on floodplains because there is a shortage of housing in this area. It is the southeast. But if they built them like a river house like this, there's not a great, great problem because it's not taken up much space because it's built on stilts, so it's only taken up a few square yards of space. You don't concrete underneath, gravel underneath, don't concrete your drives, gravel them, and obviously that minimises the environmental effect. Why then is it still easy to find new build houses in this area with no real protection from the river? This evening, there are still 14 severe flood warnings along the Thames alone. With more bad weather forecast, the Environment Agency is warning levels could rise again, possibly rivalling these scenes from 1947, the worst British floods of the 20th century.